Welcome to the A to Z of golf. I'm Simon Dyson. We've come up with 26 videos for your golf. Let's jump into the first one. In this video, we're concentrating on the letter Q and that is for question time. So thanks so much for all the questions that you sent in. There were some brilliant ones. I've picked the top six and we're gonna go through them. So let's get stuck in. I get this one asked a lot and it is, how did I prepare for my tournaments? Basically mentally, physically and nutrition. So leading up to a tournament, it, it almost depended what type of tournament it was as well. Um, I really focused my fitness leading the week before the tournament, really like amped it up. Um, and then the days leading up to the tournament, kind of it was more about stretching properly and just staying, staying um, energized, keeping, keeping the energy levels high because four rounds of golf is a lot to, lot to put up with. Um, also mentally, kind of just walking the course a lot, seeing where I want to hit it. A lot of people kind of look for where they don't want to hit it. I would say that's probably one of the worst things you can do. You want to be looking at where you want your strategy for that course and sticking to it. You know, you see a lot of guys change the strategy throughout a tournament and it can kind of become, you know, a negative thing for them. You know, they change, the, change what shot they're going to hit, change it to driver or something and it just doesn't really work. So pick your strategy. Uh, nutrition wise, you know, I always ate pretty healthily. I worked with a nutritionist for many years and she was amazing so she would help me in my build up to what I was you know when I was going into a tournament there would be carbs on an evening so the energy's there in the morning and then just a light breakfast and snacking a lot you know you you see a lot of sportsmen tennis players especially just snacking in between sets and it's so important to keep those blood sugar levels kind of consistent you don't want any highs and you don't want you certainly don't want any dips so that would be my lead up to a tournament and then tournament mornings i would say you know limber up with resistance bands and then just literally a general loose warm up on the range and not working on anything specifically because i've done all the preparation leading up to it so a lot of people ask me about self-doubt you know when they get off to a good start in a, in a round in a tournament and then that self-doubt kicks in well for starters the self-doubt i don't know why that's kicking in because you're proving to yourself that you can do it you could be two or three under through five or six holes and then that brain starts thinking oh i'm on for a good score here instead of thinking like that and thinking negatively flip it round and think i've got off to the best start why don't I capitalise on it and try and shoot my lowest round of the day? And it's just flipping that mentality. Too many guys are waiting for the bad shot to happen. Whereas if you actually think about the shots you want to hit and just stay positive, there's a really good chance you're going to shoot your lowest score. And it's so important to get rid of that negativity. You know, negativity is so powerful that once that negativity kicks in that's why you'll see a lot of guys making bogey after bogey after bogey because they're thinking nothing but negative whereas you see the top players they can shoot 62 they get off to a good start they're not thinking oh i need to hold on here they're thinking let's go low and that's the way you've got to start thinking and you know what it won't always happen but if you do think more positive and think about shooting those low scores, I guarantee you, you will do at some point. Goal, what's my motivation for playing and goals for the future? Do you know what, my motivation for playing, I just love playing golf. I love playing with the lads. I mean, at the minute, I don't really miss the traveling and the competitive side, because I know how hard those guys work. And I did it for 18 years, so, and I had a good spell at it. Um, Goals for the future, I mean, I'd love to play the Seniors Tour in the States. I think as long as I can stay uh, healthy and fit and keep my golf game at a pretty good level, I think once I turn 50, which is in quite a few years, but once I turn 50, I think I'd really love to give that a go. I mean, I say I don't miss the competitive side, I do. 
because I love a good challenge and I love competing. So I think that's a really good goal for me. But for now, for playing and coaching, coaching's my motivation at the minute. There's nothing better than helping somebody who comes into you and they're struggling mentally or they're struggling with a little bit of part of the game and you help them with it. And then you get that text saying, oh, thanks, thanks for helping me. I'm now down from nine to six. You know, there's, there's nothing better than that. But I think at some point I will get the dust off the bats and start competing again. Not for a few years, but that's the goal. Why did you stop playing on tour? So basically I stopped playing on tour. Uh, in 2015, I literally hit a shot and I snapped the sub sheath in my left wrist that holds all the tendons in place. And it was so painful. Um, I let it heal, I tried to play, and I just couldn't play. So I went and had wrist surgery. Uh, I saw a guy called Dr. Uh, Mike Hayton, um, and he was brilliant, and he, and he did a fantastic job. But there's all, always that, when I came back, I was so scared to take divots in case it went again, because I remember how it felt when I did it. And I came back, I, I took about nine or 10 months out, came back and, do you know what? I just wasn't the same player. I, uh, I'd lost a bit of confidence and, you know, just the commitment to the shots wasn't there. And I started, again, I started to doubt myself and my confidence, like I said, went. And I just wasn't the same player and I'd lost that competitive edge. And I tried for two years on tour, didn't play good at all. But in the background, I'd kind of been working on other things. I'd been, I'd been to LA and done my TPI. And then I did my level two, three, and four uh, golf fitness. And, you know, I'd done sports psychology courses as well. And, and it, I felt like it was kind of time to maybe, as much as I didn't want to stop playing, because I loved competing, the, I think the time was just right. And it's all about timing. So that's why I stopped playing on tour. So a lot of people talk about how to be mentally strong at golf. And it's something that you have to work really hard at. It is the one part of the game, since I stopped playing, it is the one part of the game that I know makes all the difference. You know, a lot of guys, you see it on tour, you see it on challenge tour, a lot of guys fundamentally swing it beautifully, they hit it great, but they're just, ha they're not that mentally strong. And it's something you really have to work hard at. Um, my career probably changed when I started working hard at it. I played with Ernie Els down in Melbourne and he was the best I'd ever seen. Just the, the ability to get rid of what had happened, he'd make a silly bogey and he'd just forget about it and then make a couple of birdies. And it wasn't until then that I realized how important it was. So I started training and trying to do exactly the same. So the minute I made a bogey, instead of focusing on the bogey, my first thought was, right, let's get it straight back. Let's make a birdie. And when I started changing my mindset into a more positive one and getting a lot more mentally strong, my game just changed totally. Um, like I said, it's something you've got to work at. You really do. And it, we all work on our swings. We all work on our drivers. We work on our putting. But not many people make the time to work on the mental side of golf. And that's where it's won and lost. So work hard, read books, and just put it into practice. Practice what you preach. I love the, si the mental side of golf because, again, like I said, it's where it's won and lost. So you've just got to work really hard and find out what works for you as well. So if I had my time again, I could change anything. I would probably, I spent a lot of time on a, dr on a driving range and I wish I'd spent half the time on a driving range and more time on the short game and the putting side of things, you know. T to green, I was, I would say I was one of the best. You know, I used to hit a lot of fairways and a lot of greens, give myself a lot of birdie chances, but I couldn't convert them. And even towards the end of my career, I remember, you know, I'd, I'd play the first six holes, I'd hit every fairway and every green, and I'd be one over par. So looking back, I wish I'd gone more down that side of, uh, of practice, a lot more putting, a lot more short game, and really put a lot of attention on my mindset, my mindset. I mean, 
I did work at my mindset, but now I know how important it is. I wish I'd really focused on that and almost made that my priority. Fitness side, I was, I was always one of the fittest on tour, so that was not something I would change. But yeah, the mental side, the short game side and putting, I would definitely change that. Right guys, they're the six questions I chose. Thanks for sending them in. Uh, I hope you got a lot out of them and I look forward to filming some more in the future. Thank <laughs> you.